Welcome back to Maths with Mrs J. We've started a series of videos about probability distributions. And at the moment, I want to talk about them in general. I will be going specifically into binomial distributions and normal distributions later in this series of videos. For now, we're just talking about, in general, a probability distribution of a continuous random variable. What's the difference between continuous and discrete? Well, a continuous random variable can take on any value within a particular interval. Now, pretty much everything that you measure, whether it be heights, weights, volumes, speeds, whatever, we mostly round off, don't we? So we might say, someone might say they weigh 65 kilograms. That does not mean they weigh 65 kilograms on the dot. And then the next, if they gain weight, they instantly go to 66 kilograms, all right? If they weigh 65 kilograms, they're somewhere between 64.5 and 65.5 kilograms. And in terms of our um, probability distribution of a continuous random variable, the number itself will have zero probability because it's just one line and will have no area. We're talking about the probability being the area under the curve from now on. So if you're talking about a number that has been rounded off, you really need to think about what the interval is that that represents. So if we have a function like this and we're modeling what would happen to the histogram as you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller intervals, so it smooths out, that's called a probability density function. Let's go on and have a bit of a look about at the sum of the uh, features of a probability density function. There are two basic criteria that a function must have in order to count as a probability density function. f of x, the function, must be greater than or equal to zero for all of x in the interval that you're considering. Bearing in mind, sometimes that interval might be all the way from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Sometimes it's unbounded. Just bear in mind, if you're using this notation for your interval, for your domain, you can't include infinity or negative infinity because they don't exist as numbers on the real number line. So obviously, if it's heading up towards infinity, we have to use a curved bracket there. So first thing, it must be positive or zero. Second thing, the area under the graph from C to D must be one. That's because, remember, with your probability topic, the probability, the total sum of all the probabilities of everything that could possibly happen is going to be one, all right? One is certain. It's certain that one of the things that are gonna happen is gonna happen, all right? And I know that sounds weird, but it's true, all right? So all of this area under here is going to equal one. We have done a series of videos on integrating and you will need to know how to integrate in order to do this topic. Now, specifically, if we are talking about a domain from A to B, then, well, that A, A and B is part of that interval that we're talking about, then the probability that your random variable sits between A and B is going to be this area under the curve from A to B. So it will be that definite integral. Because we're above or on the x-axis, we don't have to worry about the situation where we're calculating area where it dips below the x-axis. That's not going to be a concern for us here. With a probability density function, for it to be a probability density function, it must be either on the x-axis or above the x-axis. So when we're calculating the area, we don't need to worry about the absolute value or any x-intercepts or anything like that. Okay, let's move on and have a look at an example. So here's an example where we're told that we have a random variable x and we're given the probability density function that f of x is c times x for x um, between zero and two inclusive, and the probability density function is zero if x is less than zero or x is greater than two. 
first of all, what is that going to look like? We should have a look at, you know, what is that actually going to mean? Okay, this is a piecewise function. Let me just draw up here what we're dealing with. So we've got a situation where we have... All right, from zero to two, so this is f of x. This is just a very, very rough sketch just to let us know what's going on. So from zero to two, we have a straight line y equals c times x. Now it must be a, well, we're actually about to find the value that it has to be in order for it to be a probability density function, but we know it has to be a positive value of C, otherwise it's not going to be above the x-axis. So if we're drawing it, we're going to have something like this, and this is going to come in here at 2 times C. Now, everywhere else, so this includes both ends, to the left of zero, the function is going to just be zero, and that's meant to go down to the line there, and Bigger than two, it's also at zero with an open circle there. That, that point's not included. So this is what our function looks like. We need to find the value of C that will make this a probability um, a density function. Now, clearly C has to be positive, clearly, because we know that for a probability density function, it has to be above or on the x-axis. So in essence, when we do our overall probability equaling one, so from negative infinity to infinity being one, really the only bit that's above is this section here from zero to two. So we can actually rewrite our negative infinity to infinity as zero to two, because that's the only part that's relevant, the only part that's gonna give us any area. Now, for this to be a probability density function, what does that area have to equal? It has to equal one. Okay, so from zero to two of cx dx, we are going to integrate. So integrating that, we're gonna get cx squared on two, and we're gonna sub in. So we're gonna get c times two squared on two minus c times zero squared on two, which is it's nothing. So we're gonna get, um, 2c, because we've got 4c on 2, and we know that that has to be 1 in order for this to be a probability density function. Therefore, c is going to be 1 half. So that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question, we now know what c is. So if I'm finding the probability that x is greater than 1.5, again, remember, in essence, we're really just concerned with this now because there's nothing above two. So it's going to be from 1.5 to two of a half X, or you could put the half out the front, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna get X squared on four. So we're gonna get two squared on four minus one and a half squared on four, which is, what is it? We get um, one minus nine on 16, which is seven on 16. Okay, so that gives you that probability there. Let's do another one. Just have a look at one more example in this video. So if we go to the next slide, We've got a similar situation, but a slightly more complicated looking function. Our first question asks us to sketch that function. We should hopefully by now know about our basic functions and their shapes and how to sketch them. What we've got here is, I should add our one into here, um, a piecewise function, of course, where between zero and one, we have a quadratic function. It is a parabola, isn't it? And it is a concave downwards parabola, right? Or upside down, if you want to use that terminology. Um, 
when x is less than zero, the function is just zero. When x is greater than one, the function is just zero. So let's have a bit of a look here and see what we're going to end up with as our picture. So if this is x and this is f of x, obviously x less than zero, it's just zero. So that's easy, it's not a problem. And that should have an open circle there. When x is greater than one, it's also zero. All right, so at one here, it's greater than zero. So it's really only this section here that we need to uh, be concerned with. Having a look at this, this is an upside down parabola. When x is zero, right, the y value will be 1.5. And when y is zero, your x values will be one and negative one. Now the negative one is not applicable here because for x values less than zero, the function is just zero. So we're gonna have something like that. Now that doesn't look fantastic, but it, it does the job, right? Show that it's a probability distribution. Well, it, part A is satisfied. So it's definitely, f of x is definitely greater than or equal to zero for all of our x's. That's a little sign meaning for all. Right, we get a bit lazy and we like using symbols instead of words. The second thing we need to do, we need to prove that the total area under that curve is one. So what we need to do is, so let's do this. So we need to show, so from negative infinity to infinity of our f of x. Well, let's just simplify this for a minute. From negative infinity to infinity, as far as we're concerned, it's really only from zero to one that we need to worry about. And it's this function here. Because there is no area under those sections there. All right, so we're gonna end up with 1.5 and then we're gonna integrate this and sub in our value. So we're gonna get 1.5 times one minus a third minus zero minus zero. So we get three on two times two thirds. And lo and behold, as we needed to find, it is one. So that and that give us that, it, yes, it is a probability density function. Not PDF as in a file, it's a probability density function. All right, finding the probability that x is greater than 0.5. Well, again, let's just simplify this for our particular situation. What we need to find here is the area from 0 0.5 up to one of our function. So let's just do that. So subbing in, we're gonna get 1.5 times. Okay, so one minus a third minus a half minus one on 24. And that comes out to three over two times two thirds minus 11 on 24, which is three over two times five on 24, which equals five on 16. It's okay to use a calculator here. All right, I just like working with fractions. So there you have it. So that's some examples. We're starting to really put together our knowledge from different areas of the curriculum. Obviously here we're learning to use our integrals, our definite integrals to help us with our probability. Okay. In our next video, we're gonna start using limits as well. All right, so all of that prep out preparatory stuff that you did in early high school and in year 11, in the beginning of year 11, really comes into play now.